Mr. Ambassador, uh, we are marking this year uh, eight years of uh, diplomatic relations between Mexico and Romania. Please note uh, three important events uh, in the history of these relations. Well, the first is the beginning of our uh, establishing relations with the recognition by the Mexican President Lázaro Cárdenas in 1935, the Minister Plenipotentiary of Romania to Mexico. Uh, so it, at that time, our Minister Eduardo Hay, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, recognized the strong links between Mexico and Romania in the common origin, common cultural heritage. We have affinity in, Lat in the Latinity culture that we belong. The second important one was the Second World War, because uh, uh, Mexico was allied of the United States and Romania was an allied of the Axis. And this, uh, the, so we broke relations with uh, Romania. So we have interrupted these uh, diplomatic relations because of the different uh, positions we had during the Second World War. Although we didn't participate actively because we are not uh, a military power, uh, but, polit but politically it, it was done. And, and the third one, I think it's when Romania became a free democratic uh, society after the, the, the dictatorship, thanks to the Romanian revolution, and the joining of the European Union. So these are the three major historical events that mark our bilateral relations. What do you think Romanians could do, could uh, learn from uh, Mexicans? And uh, what do Mexicans uh, could learn from, uh, from Romanian people? Well, this, this is a mutual process of learning. Uh, Mexicans could learn from Romania today. In, I think we are very impressed with the way the Romanians are fighting corruption. This is uh, one of the big uh, assets. All countries have uh, corruption but not all of them fight them in a very efficient way like uh, Romania is doing. So we have to learn from Romanian to fight corruption um, uh, with a very strong institution, with a fiscal authority who is very well uh, represented and with the full powers to, to fight. Uh, not only the, the small, small uh, fish, but the big fish. And, and, and the Romanians, I think, the they might learn uh, one of the, of the, I would say, capabilities of Mexico is to promote culture. We, we are very good on promoting culture. Mexico has a very strong political identity. So, and we know how to promote it. And I think Romania has also very good, uh, important uh, cultural identity, personality, but uh, I would say that there should be greater efforts to improve uh, their marketing, their public relations abroad. When you say Romania, what is the first thing, uh, the first thing what, uh, who came in your mind? Uh, what is the, the base quality of Romania uh, that you see as a diplomat? Well, Romania, when I was uh, a young uh, a student at the university, uh, uh, was an important place for uh, agriculture and also because of Nadia Comaneci's great performance. Uh, so the first great uh, character for me uh, when I was a young student, uh, Comaneci was extraordinary uh, as everywhere in the world. Well, it is a topic, but it is true. Uh, and uh, the other, the other uh, stereotype of Romania is, of course, Dracula. So uh, it's, it's not uh, only for me, it's everywhere. You know it's not real. <laughs> I know. I know. And I learned uh, after I became interested in Romania when I was appointed ambassador to Bucharest. And uh, uh, I know that the, uh, he's an historical character who is a national hero. And unfortunately, this Bram Stoker novel has been uh, mis misidentifying the uh, real personality of this great uh, character who was uh, 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 Vlad, Vlad Sepech, the, the, Sepech, the impaler, as it is now, uh, because he played an important role to, to 
keep Romania from the uh, enemies, from the, the, the Ottoman Empire. And uh, so he was a nationalistic hero. And uh, this happened at the same time when, in the end of the 15th century, the Spanish kings were fighting the Moors uh, uh, to keep the European uh, family Christian. So I think we should recognize more the value of I I the bloody Tepes uh, on this role instead of this uh, stereotype of uh, like these vampires and things like that. But unfortunately, you know, uh, Hollywood makes all these kind of stereotypes. In the case of Romania and in the case of Mexico is the sombrero, you know, the sleeping Mexican in a cactus. You have good stereotypes too in Mexico, it's like Zorro. It's a good, uh, <laughs> yes. it's a good hero. <laughs> yes, he was uh, a California hero in the colonial times when we were uh, part of the California territory. Uh, what's the situation of the commercial exchanges uh, between our two countries? We have 500 million uh, dollars exchange, exports and imports between Mexico and Romania. The most important item is the auto parts for the car industry. Uh, we, uh, we export a lot of auto parts to Romanian industry for the Dacia uh, cars. And also we import uh, auto parts to Mexico from Romania because Mexico is also an important uh, car maker. We are the fourth largest producer of cars in the world. And I saw you import steel too. Yes, but not, not in big quantities. Uh, and uh, I, I learned that there is a new uh, measure about this, uh, the steel uh, imports from Romania. As you know, Europe is currently going through a difficult period generated by the flow of refugees from Africa, Orient, Middle East. Some states from Latin America have already presented their position and in some cases even their willingness to receive refugees. How do Mexico see this situation? Well, Mexico is a migrating country, as is Romania, and we are also a transit country. Uh, the migration goes, as you know, from south to north, and this is one of the most important features. Uh, the position of Mexico is very clear. Human rights has to be respected without any, any other consideration, the, without the, any uh, legal statu quo. Uh, independently of that, uh, there, there should be respected always the human rights of any migrant. And I, in this position, I think we share the same with the Romania. Uh, uh, but uh, there are differences also in between the uh, situation in Mexico and in the situation in Europe. Uh, first of all, uh, most of the migrants in from Central America who go to the U.S. through Mexico are for uh, economic reasons. Mexican migrants are going to the U.S. for economic reasons because they found better paid jobs in the U.S. than what they receive in, in Mexico, for example. The, 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 uh, in the other side, uh, these uh, new refugees, this new wave of refugees coming from mostly from Iraq, and Syria and other uh, countries in that area are because of a political reason, because of the war uh, in that places. So uh, motivations are so different. And, and, and I would say that the, the, the Mexican migrants in the US are very well integrated into the American society. They, they, we belong to the same uh, uh, roots of religion. We belong to the same area. We are uh, North Americans. No uh, compatible. Uh, it's a compatibility between. Yes, and there is, um, let's say, centuries of uh, sharing together a common border uh, between Mexico and the United States. Uh, and, and, and you have also to remember that um, uh, California, Texas, New Mexico, uh, and Colorado were part of Mexico. 
So in a way, we were not strange to that land. San Francisco, San Antonio, uh, Los Angeles, San Diego are Spanish names, cities with which were founded by the Spanish when Mexico uh, covered these territories. So uh, uh, this is not a big difference. And we are Christians also. We have uh, we are Protestants, the, the Americans mostly Protestants, Mexican mostly Catholics, but we have uh, the, the basic uh, common uh, culture. And there is a mutual influence. The Mexican cuisine is mostly known in the United States, is getting more and more presence. And, and the American culture is also influencing Mexico. And, and so it's a very dynamic integration in the border, economically and socially between Mexico and the United States. So the, here's so much, so much difference that we cannot compare. Oh, and what I think is very important, there are both tolerant, um, tolerant cultures and religions. Uh, yes, uh, we are Christians, Protestants and Catholics and Orthodox, all are Christians. So this is not a radical change. So, and it's important to underline that Mexicans integrate to the to the U.S., respecting the laws, respecting the norms, but of course with their own uh, social and cultural background. Which are the activities that uh, the Embassy of Mexico is organizing with the occasion of the 80th anniversary of diplomatic relation between uh, Mexico and Romania? We have four main activities to celebrate 80 years of diplomatic relations. First one is uh, a portrait exhibition uh, of uh, Emil Choran, the great uh, Romanian philosopher, made by a distinguished uh, Mexican photographer, Rogelio Cuellar. We're going to have this exhibition uh, open on Tuesday, the 15th of September at five o'clock. And I invite the people of Romania to join us at the Biblioteca Nacional for this great event. The second activity will be uh, a series of lectures by a distinguished writer, Francisco Prieto, on the influence of, of Emil Choran and Mircha Eliade on the Mexican cultural life. Uh, Mr. Prieto had the opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Eliade during one of his trips to Mexico. And so he will present a very original perspective of how these two big intellectuals have been uh, connecting with the Mexican culture, with the Mexican elite, with the Mexican intelligence. So it is uh, a new uh, focus that we show to the Romanian public. So it, in a way, we are paying a tribute to the Romanian intellectuals, how they were so important in Mexico that they are now still debated his thoughts. Some of them like them, some of them they don't like so much. So this is what we would like to have it. Uh, first at the Biblioteca Nacional, then at the Humanitas Library, then at the Anti-Café Seneca. And uh, we are very happy to have this, uh, this uh, dialogue. The third activity will be an uh, engraving exhibition of how Mexico was seen by European artists from uh, the 16th to the 19th century. Uh, these these uh, engravers, the old engravers which are making the drawings they, they, per, they show, according to his own relatively uh, uh, per, uh, perception, the conquest of Mexico by Spain in the 16th century to the most modern country in the 19th century, which became independent. So we can see the evolution of this perception, how the European artists made the image of Mexico without being in Mexico because they were uh, just based, most of them, on the history and chronicles, written chronicles. So I can, just, for example, uh, present uh, Theodore de Brie, was uh, a Dutch engraver, who in the 16th century, his country, the Netherlands, was part of the Spanish kingdom. And he was a Protestant, so he didn't like the Spanish. So he, he, he presented the Spanish conquest of Mexico and other countries in Latin America in a very bad uh, way, uh, exaggerating the, the, uh, the, uh, the, bloody, the bloody wars that the conquest took place, 
but neglecting the positive things, which are the, the education, the values of Western countries. That's why we are Latin countries today. And, and the, uh, all this process of uh, getting other uh, cultural fields. But uh, uh, that was the beginning of a black legend of the conquest that they call La Leyenda Negra, La, the black legend by which the, this uh, 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 drawer, this artist, had a big influence because his drawings were published in the books in Europe. So uh, a Spanish won the conquest, but lost the PR war, the image war, the communication war. I understand this collection is yours. Correct. This is a collection of the ambassador of Mexico, uh, which uh, has taken me more than 20 years to, to find in different uh, capitals of Europe, from uh, antiquarian shops and from books I've been collecting. Uh, so it's a fascinating uh, uh, they are all originals, they are not photocopies of, of, of them. So it's, it's an, uh, an interesting uh, uh, exhibition. And the fourth activity will be the recital by a uh, uh, Mexican soprano, uh, who is going to perform with um, a Romanian pianist, Mexican and Romanian songs at the opening ceremony. So what I'm showing here is that there is a mixture and mutual influence between Mexico and Romania. Uh, we have uh, diplomatic relations since 1935. Uh, are there many Mexicans in Romania? No, we are only about 100 uh, Mexicans living in Romania. Mostly of them are engineers working for uh, oil companies, technical uh, companies. They are uh, 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 petroleum engineers or electrical engineers, and some are on the marketing. The other sector are women married to Romanians, and the third one are students who came to Romania to study in the different universities all over the country. Uh, we know Mexico is a, a exotic tourist destination. Uh, do you know, are, many, are there many Romanians who travel in Mexico for uh, for Uh, fun for uh, visiting the sites there? Yes, there are 2,000 Romanian uh, tourists traveling to Mexico every year and it's growing, it's growing more and more because we are promoting more Mexico in Romania with the tour operators, tour agencies, travel agencies and we have invited uh, this year two uh, tour operators, two, two travel agents to travel to a Mexican tourism fair Uh, in order to promote more our country. The uh, attraction, the, but the best, the best advertising for Mexico are the, the Romanian tourists who came back and say, wow, this is a great place. And they mouth to mouth, you know, the oral communication is more effective than the, any uh, campaign because they, they convince friends and relatives to go to Mexico. The, what are the advantages of, of going to Mexico? It's, First, we have a very good culture, very strong, very exotic, attractive culture like the pyramid of Chichen Itza, of the Mayans. Uh, second, we have beautiful beaches, soft sand, white turquoise water, nice temperature, excellent service, and above all, the Mexican hospitality. Mexican people is very warm, like the Romanians are. So we don't speak the same language, but we are Latins, and we get uh, very well easy together. We are very, very easy going. So, um, and, and the food, uh, the Mexican food is also very nice. Very uh, spicy. The spicy <laughs> and, and tasty. Huh? Oh, uh, spicy is good. <laughs> yes, yes. And we have the tequila and mezcal, so we, they have very good time. And the price is not so expensive. It takes about 1,500 euros for 10 days or 15 days. Uh, all included, air ticket, food, and hotel. Uh, for Romanian, uh, Mexico is indeed a, an exotic destination. But uh, I think uh, for uh, Mexicans, Romania is too an exotic destination. And I think uh, all the Eastern Europe. Uh, 
there are there are Mexicans uh, who came here from for uh, tourist uh, oh, as the, a tourist. Yes, in, they, they are coming. Uh, not so many because uh, I think we the 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 Mexicans are more focused on on Western Europe. Uh, it's far away, and they they are. But the the tourists who come to Romania from Mexico are the ones who already know Paris, Rome, London, and Madrid. They want to to get a better, better uh, under, uh, knowledge of Europe, and Romania is attracting greater, more interest. Uh, first of all, because of the nature, nature is very important for Romania to 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 offer to Mexican tourists. They like the Carpathian Mountains, and secondly, also it's so important all the Bukovina monasteries with the mural paintings. You know, Mexico has a very strong tradition of muralism. We have Rivera, Diego Rivera, Orozco and Siqueiros, who painted big murals in the public buildings in Mexico. So we have in common also these all, all 16th century old mm, murals in the churches of, of monasteries of Bukovina, which are remarkable. Uh, so these sophisticated travelers they know all, all these old places from Western Europe, but now they want to discover Romania and also enjoy the nature of Romania, the, the, the forests, uh, the wild places, keeping in, in nature in, in very good condition. And uh, one last question. Uh, do you think it's, uh, is there a reluctance uh, uh, on Mexican people when it's about uh, Romania and Eastern Europe because uh, uh, we are uh, former communist countries. Uh, I ask you this because uh, uh, it's a, a stereotype that exists uh, anywhere in the world about uh, Eastern Europe. Yes, it, it, it is. It is. You know, the problem is that the the we need to discover Romania for these perceptions because it's still heavy. You are right. I think it's still hanging on the perception, but it's a lack of information. That's why we need to work together, Mexico and Romania, to show that Romania is a progressive country, a democratic country, and, and it's, uh, Romania is, is growing 3% uh, the economy every year, one of the largest economy uh, rate of growth in Europe. Spain is um, less than 1%. Uh, or, or, or half percent of the economy growing every year. Romania, 3%, it's, it's, it's very good news. You are doing a good job. And, and the second is to do more, more advertising. You need to do more promotion abroad about the new reality of Romania. Uh, uh, you are building a young democracy. It's, it, the, the perception should be changed uh, because there is no longer a Ceausescu dictatorship. On the contrary, you have a very uh, new democracy who is uh, uh, very open. And it was amazing for, um, f to see a new president uh, from an ethnic origin became uh, president of Romania. This is a great maturity shown by the Romanian people. Thank you. You're welcome.